And finally, we come to transfer RNA. So we talked about messenger RNA. We talked about ribosomal RNA briefly. Now we're going to talk about transfer RNA. Transfer RNA, you can see that it has this clover leaf-like structure. There's three leaves. It must not be a very lucky clover. It's just three leaves to the clover. And of course, at the five prime end is a phosphate group going all the way around to the three prime end where there is a hydroxyl group. Now, in ribosomal, pardon me, in transfer RNA, it's to this three prime hydroxyl group to which the activated amino acid is going to be attached. You see, the function of transfer RNA are, it, are twofold. Number one, to pick up the amino acid, to pick up the proper amino acid, and then number two, to recognize the codon on the messenger RNA. So there's two important parts to each transfer RNA. Number one is that three prime hydroxyl group where the amino acid is going to be covalently attached. Notice it's always a CCA residue here. There's always a CCA residue to which the incoming amino acid is going to covalently bond to the transfer RNA. The second important portion of each and every transfer RNA is the anticodon. Okay, the anticodon down here is the sequence that's going to be complementary and anti-parallel to the codon sequence of the messenger RNA. For example, if the incoming messenger RNA places an AUG in the proper site on the ribosome, well, that AUG is going to want to complementarily base pair with a transfer RNA that is anti-parallel and complementary to it. So how would that read? Well, from 5 to 3 prime, that's going to read CAU. The C complementary to the G, the A complementary to the U, and of course, the U complementary to the A. So that's how this would work. It's complementary, remember, once again, and it's anti-parallel. So if the codon reads from 5 to 3 prime, such as this, it reads AUG, the anticodon from 5 to 3 prime is going to read CAU. You might be asked a question where you're given the mRNA sequence and asked, what would the anticodon look like? Or you may be even given a DNA sequence and have to work your way down and ask and figure out what would the anticodon on the tRNA look like. Now, just a couple other key features. Number one, Transfer RNA is unusual in that you can see modified bases. Like you see, uh, the, the guanosines can be modified. The adenosines can be modified. And lo and behold, what do you see down here? You see a T. Oh my goodness. T, this is RNA. You're not supposed to see Ts in RNA, are you? Well, it's okay because in transfer, tRNA, sometimes you see Ts. So remember that. That'll help you remember the fact that sometimes in, in transfer RNA, you can see the Ts, the letters right there for you. The other point, uh, point I wanted to emphasize is there's a special family of enzymes that are responsible for covalently attaching the amino acid to the three prime end of the transfer RNA. What are these families of enzymes called? Well, they're called amino acyl tRNA synthetases. So the name tells you exactly what the enzyme does. It's an amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So through an acyl linkage, amino groups are, of the amino acid are attached to the tRNA. So every single, depending upon the anticodon that's present on the transfer RNA, the anticodon is going to get the special amino acid attached to it, which would then place the proper amino acid in the protein when the anticodon base pairs with the codon of the messenger RNA. So that's how transfer RNA works. We'll look at the process of translation a little bit later itself, and that will make a lot more sense to you. So just to emphasize some important points about transcription and RNA processing in general. First of all, between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, Gene regions. In prokaryotes, they may be polycystronic, whereas in eukaryotes, they're always monocystronic, always going to be monocystronic. In prokaryotic genes, 
The genes are always continuous coding regions, whereas in eukaryotes, the regions can be divided into exons and then the interrupting intron portion. There's very little spacer or non-coding DNA in the prokaryotic genome, whereas for eukaryotes, there's going to be lots of spacer DNA, lots of non-coding DNA regions. As far as the RNA polymerases go, in prokaryotes, the, the RNA polymerase, the core enzyme, it's an alpha-2 beta beta prime. That's the core enzyme. Alpha-2 beta beta prime uh, is what takes the prokaryotic DNA and transcribes it into messenger RNA, or it makes the ribosomal RNA, or it makes the transfer RNA. In eukaryotes, we have a different story. We have at least three distinct RNA polymerases. You might be asked about these to differentiate them. RNA polymerase 1 makes ribosomal RNA. RNA polymerase 2 makes the messenger RNA and also the small nuclear RNA involved in splicing. RNA polymerase 3, well, it makes transfer RNA and that 5S RNA. Remember that little exception. It makes the 5S ribosomal RNA. How is transcription initiated? In prokaryotes, you have a promoter region with a Tata box. You also have a minus 35 sequence. We didn't discuss too much because it's not that important. But you have a minus 10 Tata box, a minus 35 sequence, which are the landing lights, which the prokaryotic RNA polymerase looks for. There may or may not be a sigma factor uh, utilized to initiate transcription in prokaryotes, depending on the particular gene. In eukaryotes, the Tata box is located at the minus 25 sequence, so it's a little further upstream. And there's also this cat box at the minus 70 position. The cat box, also known as the El Gato box, to my Spanish-speaking friends, the cat box is simply a promoter region where the RNA polymerase can look for and see the proper sequence, bind, and then start transcribing. In addition, in eukaryotes, there's transcription factors such as 2F2D, transcription factor 2D, which can bind to the promoter and help elicit uh, initiation of transcription. As far as the mRNA synthesis goes, ah, notice this is the same for both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The template is red, 3 to 5 prime. The mRNA is synthesized 5 to 3 prime. That's never going to change. Transcription is going to begin at the plus one base. Remember, there's no zero base. It begins at plus one. So we move on to how transcription is terminated. In prokaryotes, there is, tends to be a stem loop sequence, maybe a poly U region. Uh, there may be a stem loop sequence and a row factor. It just depends. In eukaryotes, this is not well characterized. So one less thing for you to remember. That's good. How is the DNA transcript related to the RNA? Once again, for both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, RNA is anti-parallel and complementary to the DNA sequence. Remember that the messenger RNA is going to be identical to the coding strand, except U is going to be substituted for Ts, because after all, there's no Us in the DNA, and there's no Ts in the RNA, except for, well, we just mentioned, in transfer RNA, sometimes you will see Ts in transfer RNA. And lastly, processing. So processing of the, uh, the heterogeneous nuclear RNA or the pre-mRNA, there's absolutely no processing that's going to go on within prokaryotes, whereas in with eukaryotes in the nucleus, there's a 5' prime cap, so there's a 7-methyl guanosine cap that's going to attach to the 5' prime end. There's a poly A tail, a polyadenosine tail attached to the three prime end of each message, and then there's going to be removal of the introns. So there's going to be splicing of the introns that occurs, and so the, ex the exons are then linked together after the introns are removed. And sometimes, sometimes there can be alternative splicing that happens between various cell types. A big difference here is going to be the ribosomes. Once again, in prokaryotes, it's a 70S complete ribosome divided into a 30S and 50S small and large ribosomal subunit. There's other ribosomal RNA species in there, and there's proteins. 
In eukaryotes, there's a complete 80S ribosome, which is subdivided into a small 40S and a large 60S ribosomal RNA. This ribosomal RNA is going to bind to various proteins, which gives the ribosome its three-dimensional structure. In both prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the structure of the tRNA is relatively the same. It's that cloverleaf structure attached to the three prime end via the, the amino acyl tRNA synthetases is going to be a covalent attachment of an amino acid. And then of course, there's going to be an anticodon present, which will complementarily base pair with the uh, appropriate messenger RNA codon. So that concludes chapter three, in which we discuss transcription, RNA processing. The key points here, once again, are going to be recognizing the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic uh, transcription, processing events, etc. Uh, lots of questions on the exam are going to make sure that you're clear as to what's going on in prokaryotes and what's going on in eukaryotes.